evening, everybody, and welcome to the Johnson Municipal Building, second floor, for, uh, nice cool in here. for the Maybe select board. board meeting of July 1st. We're calling the meeting to order at 6.30. The first item is additions or adjustments to the agenda. Um, I have one Rosemary's okay with it. Rosemary, can we move the... P and L is up into your report. So yeah. leave that for the tax. Okay, so item 21 is being moved up to item six minus because we're going to do it before six. Because it, we do have a application for a firework permit. Uh, uh, Route 100 C. Uh, Mr. Lord would like to see that permit because it is for. July 6th. Um, we won't be meeting again before that. We could add that to the new item 22 if the full board would like to see the permit before that happens. Yes. Okay. I do see. Okay. Any other additions or adjustments? It's been all me so far. Thank you. I don't think I got it. Mark? No, it didn't. I did. Okay, you bring your concerns up on the items, right? Uh, item number two is reviewing invoices and orders that happens throughout the meeting. Item number three is public comment. Is there any comment from the public? Got a real live crew here tonight. Okay, item number four is select board issues or concerns. And I believe that you've had one, Amar. I do. Um... Since we don't have the um, charger for the state, it should be signed out on the city. Or did the charger work? Or did the charger work? Um, is that a town sign? Is it a state it's highway? Probably right a state away? highway, but it's far from so it. You know, um, let's get the charger fixed. Let's get it. Let's get it. I agree. We should get it fixed. It's, so, the, it's the future. So the board's wishes on this are to get an idea of what it No, sorry. Half of the people in Bob Cars are required for I think, yeah, we uh, to look at the same thing earlier. So yeah. I had Gould yeah. Electric uh, try to put it under our current claim and then put it into FEMA. I did not see either because it's out in the open. But one side is functioning, the other side is not functioning. Then let's uncover one side. That's, I think that's the question. Can I have Gould Electric come back and just dis disengage that? Yeah, it doesn't retract or go out. Of it. I can just figure it out. I mean, do it. Okay, done. People are. Yep. I, I, I have a, I have a plug-in plug car. I'll be able to plug in. Okay. Into my real car, get my train. Right. Work at the right is bike down here today, so. My electric. Are you good with that, Tom? We'll get the one side open up, get a quote on the other side, or you know, I think it's we can open it up tomorrow and just say don't use this side. But if people try to use it, it throws like weird error messages. It's like I think it's probably out of just like it's somehow disabled that side, right? Okay. We need to discuss ATVs. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, High Park is open up all of the ports. ATVs. In Hyde Park, you can drive your ATV right to the courthouse if you wanted to. In Johnson, you can't even drive to the gas station. So I think we need to, I just want to open up every road in town. So we need to discuss it because I think it's an old business that we have never put to bed. Certainly. Uh, did bring up the ordinance and the conversation about it. If we could try to have either the sheriff or a representative group for that, because I know an issue in the past has been enforcing it out of the board. And so uh, having them here to speak to that would be helpful. Any other issues or concerns from the board? Um, I just wanted to ask Tom. So, um, we had talked a while back about the tree protectors on Main Street. Um, I spoke to Sue Levering today, uh, and she just kind of wanted to see 
where that project was at and whether there was a possibility of collaboration between town and village to get it done. Yeah, this is pretty, I don't know if you remember, it was a pretty contentious meeting. Um, so the town, the trees are the villages and the grapes are the villages and the tree sectors are the villages. The town got the grant. So the town is willing to be the pastor for that grant. But the work has to come. Sue Lovren. Sue Lovren got the grant. Um, but she did represent the town, I guess. Or that our knowledge, yeah. Uh, but we have it, and it's here. And uh, the town agreed to facilitate the fiduciary role, but all of the voicing had to come from the work. So, so. Um, I've talked to Sue a couple times and directed her that really she needs, and I've talked to Derek a couple times too, that really that work needs to be directed by the village. And I suggested, you know, it's, it might be too much for our town guys to do it and just get a subcontractor to do the work. It's clean, black and white, and you're not having municipalities contract with a municipality. And then we can simply just pay a voice. But I think it's, it's like a hard, Telling another municipality what they need to do is not easy. Right. And Sue's in a tough spot to navigate that role. Uh, yeah, I think, but it's up to the village to take the next step. Okay. Yeah. So your question. Yes. Okay. I have one, and, and I don't want it to be an issue, but I'm going to issue more of a general comment on my opinion. I'd like to see if we can get the historic. Society, Fulton House, pressure wash, or something. It's just very, very dirty. dirty and I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I'm not saying we have the money the budget. I uh, could get an idea on what it would cost or something. It would just be done recently. Yeah, yeah, we have it on my radar. I talked to Dick Sunez, and uh, as soon as they're done paving in front, I was going to do it this spring, um, but it didn't happen because. He wanted to wait till after paving, thinking it would just get dirty again. Okay. So as soon as paving's done, it's on it, the radar. It's on somebody's radar. Yep. I'm good. Okay. All right. Any other issues or concerns from the board? Our next item is the consent agenda items. I would entertain, entertain a motion from the board to approve the minutes from June 3rd and 17th, as well as the noise ordinance waiver that is in the packet for. August 24th. August 24th. Uh, I will move that we approve the minutes for June 3rd and June 17th, as well as the noise ordinance waiver for August 24th. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Is there further discussion from the board? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Yeah, I, just for clarity purposes, the lady all need to sign an oldest ordinance waiver. So then if somebody has yeah. a no. signature copy, we could yeah, pass it around. Do you have the signature copy for us? Add the docu sign. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, their application was until midnight, right? You want to pass around your copy? No, thanks, God. Else is on it. Okay. Rosemary. Yes. Floor is yours. And I do believe we moved uh, errors and omissions up above before the tax rate. You're okay with okay. that. Yeah. You want to do errors and omissions right now? Uh, did you hand those out? There is one for the village of Hyde Park for utilities. Um, it went from 440,300 to 461,600 for a 21,300 increase. That's going in the right direction. Yep. What happens in the case of, um, I know it's just in Silicon, it's that they had failed to file the report finally, so they, they assessed the money. 
I would entertain a motion from the board to accept the errors and omissions as presented. So made. Second. Motion a second. Further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed it would be crazy. The ayes have it. So, mm -hmm. Up till I all day. Um, Rosemary supply uh, printout of the town tax rate. Uh, sorry, Rosemary. Yep. Item number six. Would you like to present on that? Okay. The um, municipal grand list is. 243 and the taxes to be raised by taxation is two million one hundred ninety three thousand six hundred eighty six dollars which becomes a tax rate of ninety twenty six cent point point nine zero three six and adjustments for the school tax are one and large and Veteran exemptions over ten thousand, and that raises uh, fourteen thousand five hundred and ten dollars, and that rate is point zero zero six. So that would be a total of two million two hundred and eight thousand one hundred ninety six dollars, for a total tax rate of point nine zero eight five. I would entertain a motion to approve the tax rate of 0.9085. Is that your recommendation, Rosemary? Yes. So yeah, I was just trying to get a motion to talk about it. So there's a motion and a second. Is there further discussion from the board? And you would notice they have the school tax rates. Last year's the homestead was a dollar forty eight, and this year it's a dollar eight. <clears throat> the non homestead was one fifty three, and it went up to uh, one eighty seven. Just for comparison, um, what was our tax rate last year? Uh, Eighty seven cents. Point eight eight seven one. How close is this proposed rate to our proposed budget? It was very close. Our our estimated um it's uh what twenty ten thousandths, right? Our our estimated tax rate at town meeting day was point nine zero six five. Mm -hmm. My current motion on the floor is point nine zero eight five. But that is You only have one article. And it was turned down, right? Well, the big one was turned down. We had um, those were articles. Yeah, and that's included in. Yes. So really, we were darn close. <laughs> all the moving targets that are there I, I think we're very very close uh, any further so any further discussion from the board just that with everything we've been through in the last year and yeah it's really awesome to only see it go up by that level cost of living that's really great yeah no further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. We want to do a roll call on this one. 
The ayes have it. Uh, next item under your report, Rosemary, is uh, the warning for the bond vote. Mm -hmm. The uh, one question I had was the time for the international meeting on Monday, August 12th. That could be thought of seven o'clock. What are the board's wishes on the informational meeting? That and that was going to be my question. It's not. It's not indicated to be where that information on the meeting is going to be. I thought it said here somewhere. Well, it says the vote is going to be. Who signed that? Yeah. <laughs> that too, Evan. Yeah. This uh, gets back. Oh, I gotta fix that one. Uh, what are you fixing, Earl's marriage? I get to put word elementary school. Gonna add the location to the uh, commission meeting. Is everybody okay with that? I didn't buy it. I'm fine with it. Um, there are two meetings between now and then. But this has to be posted. Uh, this has to be posted at least 30 days before. Yeah, understood. Okay. I've heard. Severely opposed to a lot of a special meeting this week. From the board's wishes. Special meeting for what? Uh, for the bond vote. What do we have to do? You have to have an information meeting before any bond vote. No, but I thought we were going to have the uh, information meeting on the 12th. Well, it's the August. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're we're either going to approve or not approve this one. Well, yes, you have to do that tonight. Correct. I think we're saying the same thing. I think right, right. but I mean, I thought you were talking about an additional special meeting. So. Uh, if the board is severely opposed to this warning and they want it drastically changed, we would need to put it by the end of the week, right? That's what I'm saying. Okay, well, I would we just to approve the article as written with the modification that the location is included um, yeah. and for a time of time. So, second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? And should we authorize Evan to do we need to authorize Evan to sign it? Do we, do we all need board to sign it? Yeah, we we all need to sign it. Okay. You put it in there. Uh, no further discussion? Yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed. And the ayes have it. Yes. Could we get that amended version tonight for signature? Yeah, it's in it right now. Okay. Uh, can we present on the end of the year update? Well, that is being changed, so Mary. Currently, we are. Eighty-three percent of the budget for expenditures, which I need to make the journal to establish the paving reserve fund, and I need to make a transfer for the capital equipment fund. Those are two major things that needs to come out of the highway department. Other real large ticket items that you can pick up off that your head, but you can put on two big ones. Those are two big ones. Does the board have any questions on the current state, or are we looking forward to the? Do you think we'll have finalized numbers? Yes, I'm just kind of like. We did not spend any money out of the capital buildings category. Do you guys want that to go into 
the building a ground reserve fund. But it's maybe we should treat that as a right when we talk about kind of dealing with service. I think there's like I would have to look back at that article. I thought that unspent funds were automatically rolled, but um, we can deal with it and give it the rest of the surplus. Any other comments on the current state of finances? Bummer. I think uh, all the department heads should be congratulated for staying within their 5%. That was kind of a hard blow in the middle of the year. People to hear, and it did well. Yeah. That's the first quarter. Yeah, all you know, all their dreams got changed, and they were all with it. Yep, certainly. And we're hoping to be back in the office sometime next week. That's great it's news. Just... That's great news. You're in the office now. We are. Our phones are downstairs. Oh, really? Wow, that's going to be that's why the people can't that's that's yeah. For the yeah, telephone people can. We'll get down there eventually. Okay. Anything further to report, Rosemary? I think so. Okay. We heard that morning now. That should be right on the okay. Next up, we have our roll forum report. Which I do believe was included in the packet, you know, the supplementary material. I'm really just to um, get the whole thing more done, but they can already touch on that later. Trying to find it. Yeah, we got the fencing for the Next page after you uh, and then the, in this table packet. Yeah. Did we have much road right after flood one. damage, Jason? Right after one. That's From a, yeah, the, I mean, a week ago, we had one. We had it mainly for where the driveways, the older driveways that are grandfathered in the permit process, the road, this old water where we had the damage from. Our driveway and taking away the ditch and then yeah. sudden turn is blocking. Did you get permission from last one on the radar? I didn't seek permission, no. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good answer. But yeah. <laughs> Does the board have any other questions? Tag you over some of the stuff that's wrong, but I did I see something? Maybe it was in Tom's report about possible update on the gravel for uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I just mentioned that you might give some go ahead. All right, yeah. So we um, brought the exact same. But we brought the I think it was um the slips in the orders or something. We're gonna say the the slips in there with the tonnage of the data bit that we brought up, and we switched it all out to do the transfer of uh, where I'm saying. It's about, files. I think it was about 6,000 years. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, so we got the pile. It's probably just over a third done, and we're going to do the rest after the road construction. And we get the town at the end of the road. <laughs> oh. uh, and the salt. So, there's one more invoice that we're waiting for. It was a two-mode invoice that we was what we originally talked about with the board for the to spend so we can even under budget via the house here salt brines working. We're kind of shooting designing a small offer and more gate space so we can uh, as far as information on Pope Brook, the first segment's almost done. We start the second segment from Bar Road intersection to Valley Mall Cemetery intersection. Uh, then we got to switch over to the first brand, which is from Mackie Road. Then we'll come back to the 
Second Grand, which is from Section Cemetery, over at the top, which is the block right there. And our building. It's the finished room. Mix of that and other stuff. I think that brings up a good point, though, is that now that Jason's public works, you kind of get hammered from all sides. And I don't know if the board would be willing to help support every time that he's taken off or the crew gets taken off to help with other projects. When we have a rented excavator, it costs us about $300 a day for the excavator to sit and not ditch. Yes, not bad. You know, and so I think if we, you know, it's nice that I talked a little bit about that last week. and. I don't know if next year it would be really helpful for all of our project planning for anybody who's going to use utilize the resource of public works to just be aware that priority priority is that rented equipment that it's sitting on the side of the road is costing all this money. Um, and just ne next year, you know, like lesson learned, but moving forward, I think we just have a better idea of like when we time projects so that we're getting the best best use of our time in our equipment. You typically rent it by the week. Uh, it's rented by the by the cheapest rate for us. Yeah, there's such a call for the estimator. Usually, I tell Scott will be around the yard and anything in the helm of the fall. Eric says we'll have to spend a lot here. I don't roughly want to shoot for events that are going on in person. He usually calls me in the spring to see, and that's when I come to the board. <laughs> Yeah, I see it on foot world sitting there lately. Yeah. yeah. It was tough with the storm that came through me. Yeah. But yeah, that's definitely tended. There's three days that we did the storm stuff slash some other stuff that we had to get for other parts. I do what you gotta do. Yeah, we're open after the you know, fourth vacation slash holiday. Most of the crew will be back and we're gonna start real side and open the arm for you know, we we'll just finished up and completed. Got that up there. See, we got a lot of other people's equipment down in the parking lot. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty busy town right now. We yeah. have some company that hikes through the bus and we go in town. So, with regard to your college town play, Jason can schedule. Mm -hmm. Work that is going to need us to tell them. No, I mean, I, I get to push back and I say the same thing you just heard now, but just asking for your support that if anyone calls you saying, hey, we, you know, just be help relay the same message to so everybody saying the same thing. And we have rented equipment, that's priority. You know, just all public works projects in the middle of is the priority. Any request from any committee is secondary. That's a way to get scheduled for that. As yes, he has time to go. That's right. Okay. Further questions for Jason? One, I don't know if it's for Jason, but with regard to the gravel pit and with regard to Mike's earlier comment about unfinished business, in my opinion, we still have unfinished business with regard to. What are we doing with the ground? Are we going to try and get one? I maybe that needs to be a subject of another work session meeting to start thinking about what we do. Buy land and develop it on the gravel pit, or are we going to buy gravel? Or at some point, we need to make it seems to me we need to make that decision. That's a good point, Bob. We have a lot of good sense. So need to be tied up here. That's a good yeah. That's a big one. Yeah, certainly. But then the, the current <clears throat> but the current that we have right now won't be exhausted this year, probably next year. Um so we'll have everything down. We may have got another year. Yeah, there's so, a good amount there. And uh the ship's gonna bring back the estimator when they have time and they're just getting out the cells working back right now in Florida. But it's working good. It's reason that a dump site for all the work that we brought in happening down 
kind of taken elsewhere, but that is the initial plan. It's not the fact bearing that it's all shot. Duncan, you just had a point that we have more time. Well, we shouldn't take it down the road. No, no. You're right on that. No, I agree. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. A year is not very long for you. No. To talk about something. Not at all. But on the list, maybe that way in the natural park. Okay. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Yeah, well, I want to have a little dig in there, don't you? Oh, I'm hoping there's a lot yeah, of rambling. It, it, it would be a lot of rambling in there. <laughs> We're all set. I believe so. There was that go. The kitchen worked out really well. Our next item has a write up, and there was a presentation sent via email that we don't know. Uh, but it's Johnson Works. We're never a little bit ahead of schedule, but is everybody here that wants to be here? Johnson Works. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want me to put it up on the big screen for you? Sure. The, the, that's the yeah. big screen. That, that, yeah. I mean, if that's easier for you. What would you? What would you prefer? I don't really need it. So I <clears throat> that's pretty good. I did view it earlier. It was very, very good presentation. Yeah, I did throw it on there. Put it out there. No music. Right. Where's the music? I don't want to have a screen over the payment, like move and flash over and stuff. Right. Exactly. The one that kind of we can do that. Fades in. So distracts you from work. You guys can give us the quick rundown while Tom's doing the presentation. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Or we could wait for the presentation. No, it's okay. Um, I'll give a little just back story. Um, Johnson Works has been struggling for a couple years, but we um we have put on some events. I should say we carry mostly, but both of the two and supporting her. And um, it's we lost our five hundred one three C. We lost a treasurer along the way. Um. So basically, we are at a point where we we tried to get our status back with the nonprofit, but in order to do that, you need to have officers, and you need to have a board, and you need to have a lot of things. And we sent out numerous emails, and even accosted some people coming into the cafe. And <laughs> we just, I think, everywhere in the world is having trouble with getting volunteers, and we are part of that. So. We're exhausted in trying to get Johnson Works back as it was before. So that's really tough today. So we want to dissolve Johnson Works to eradicate all the issues we've been having, but basically do the same thing we've been doing for the past year. Okay. That's the summary. And then you would form a different name. New name. New name. Group of volunteers. Yeah. It's in the yeah. presentation. It's in the presentations. Yeah. <laughs> so, would you like uh, to direct to direct Tom um, on one to press forward? Um, we got the brief history. Perfect. So you can jump right ahead. Brief history. Brief history. Can I ask a question? What was the? I think in the history it mentioned that an event or something that sort of blew up Johnson worked. What what was the? Um, a few years back, before I became president, right before, um, there was some, some trouble with Johnson Woman Mills and some things being talked about, and it kind of did a number on Johnson Works at that time. Um, so we had a real struggle after that. There was, I, I can't, I, I don't remember exactly what the, the Facebook post said exactly. Um, it was the old owners of the one. And so um, we just struggled ever since then to kind of get our reputation back and to be, uh, to get a lot of volunteers. And businesses and businesses have been depleted in the town. It's not the same as it was when this was started. And there's not a lot of storefronts in the village to make it back to where it was. It was all a business owner alliance type thing. And, 
We got a dip from outside pools for volunteers. Those aren't really our big hands on volunteers. Does that any more questions? <laughs> Well, my one of my questions about you you said you wanted to dissolve Johnson Works. What what does that actually mean? So Johnson Works is, is a registered trademark name, and that's why we have our nonprofit, or it's why it did have its nonprofit. In order to use that name, you have to go through all of those hoops of being reestablished with to have that nonprofit. We don't need a nonprofit. We don't need to do that whole, whole thing it once was. It's not necessary. So we tried to keep it and keep the name. It's a great name, great, great name, but it's got a lot of taint in history with it. And we don't have the volunteers or the people who want to join it in that weight of being a board member or having their name on with the IRS or any of that stuff. Nobody wants to do that. So why are we hiding it when we for a year? And it's just, it really takes up a lot of extra time and energy and makes it really not fun. And we just want to put on the events for the town. Uh, That's simple. When Johnson Works was formed, there were a set of bylaws and a whole process. And you know, I'm not an expert on nonprofit, so I don't know. But, but there were a set of bylaws. I, I, one thing I think I do know about IRS requirements is there has to be a plan or I mentioned in the bylaws for what to do with any assets that remain. Has that been dealt with in any way, shape, or manner? Um, I mean, I would say that everything, yeah, I mean, we've, we've gone through the IRS, we've reached out, she's done a great job of leading us, reaching out to all the past board members that we have contact with or are still in town of trying to get the history of where it fell apart. And eventually she was basically told that there was a tub under the front window of downstairs that was lost to the flood. So it's really just kind of a lost cause. And I'm sure there are bylaws. I was never a part of Johnson Works at the time, I was not allowed to be, I was not in the business. So, and I've been a part of it for at least 10 years. I'm not sure that it has assets except for, we have a bank account right now that has just about $2,000 in it. But that's all been raised since. It's been raised since we no longer had the IRS status or the. Um, so that's really the only assets Jones first had. Didn't you have a plan? When we met, didn't you talk about that money is already allocated towards the next event? It's like it's, there's a plan to be used up to create. Because the events pay for themselves in yeah. advance, right? Yeah, or community things well. like Christmas lights, yeah. the pies, whatever. <laughs> Problem is, Johnson Works is hard to fund by itself, right? It's like it's an extra step. And then there's these great town events that support the town. The ask is that we're about yeah. So, like, we already know how to do funding. And traditionally, we always went through business owners, and the business owners basically created things to do. Like, at one point, I think there was like sidewalk sales, there were West Harvest Fest, there were things that coordinated with the, the college. Um, that it's not that that can't happen in the future. It's not currently happening. It hasn't happened for years. Uh, the reason why we started doing events a year and a half ago was because moms don't want to drive an hour to look at pumpkins or do Easter egg hunt. Our town literally is the center of the world County and doesn't do anything. So we have space to do it. Why not do it? Um, our new vision is basically the same. Like we already do sponsorships and we already get all of our fundraising for everything we do through the local businesses or outside businesses that support just community functions. And then the whole reason is just to build the community up, give like people something to do that's really low cost or free. And if we raise any money through an event, then it just goes to support the, the following months. Are you asking the town to sponsor the events? You guys committed to sponsoring us this entire year for the events we had planned. And that was to capture the insurance, um, which is already kind of captured under public things on town. Like, you know, like, okay, so it cost you guys nothing. You've already committed and you've already kind of preserved all. So we'd like to continue that. I believe just 
to be thorough that we sponsored three events. You said to come back when we had a fourth gotcha. one. Do you yeah. have the fourth one? We, it's a haunted house, yes. So that hasn't made it back. No, so. we have not circled back because we will not be going under the Johnson Works. Okay. I really feel it's important to get rid of the name. There's a lot of people who I go to approach for sponsorships, they want nothing to do with it. They, there's a lot of mistrust with it. Um, and you cannot go far with that. Do you want the town, the track? The town yeah. is completely separate, right? I don't think there's anything that binds you guys to that name other than however the structure is beginning right now. Do you know? Yeah, I've, right. it's never been. It's always been, it's been, it's been, right. yeah. Yeah. Always been. It's always been its own funds, is my understanding. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there have been requests over the years for certain things um, to do this, but uh, and we're, we're not, again, we're not asking for anything extra, except you want to tell them what we would like them to do. Or yeah, whatever. they switch the phone. So these are the four seasons of events. We want each season to have one. We've already established the haunted house. It was a three-day event, attracted over 300, 730 people from 22 different towns, attracted really well. Um, that what everybody wants that one to come back. A kind we've done two of them. It's doubled in size this year. It's way more organized, like we threw it out that squeaky wheel. That one pretty much runs itself now, which is great. There's zero fundraising up A Hunt. A Hunt is a hundred percent sponsorship through businesses or just people in the community, and there is not, it's free. It's that event costs us all the money. Um, the egg, the egg, the duck race, we postponed it this year because of this whole thing. And with not having our nonprofit like established, technically we're not allowed to be fundraising, is what we were just found out. And so we fundraised, and the duck race was our largest fundraiser. And uh, the state is, He's just done a great job communicating with them, are totally eyeballing us, so can't find a reason. Um, so we postponed it, and we want to do it at the end of the summer, and we talked to, uh, yeah, was it Tom, Tom Carnegie with the tracker frame, and we have um, talked to them to, to do it at the same time. So it, it would just like piggyback on both of the events and bring different types of people and then like, well, he's all for it. We don't know if we would move forward and always do it that way, but we're not against it. This is our burn structure. So that's our plan for this year. Um, and then up in the little corner there, it just it's a little blurb, blurb about the Jubilee. We did not do the Jubilee last year. We were depleted from the flood and we wanted to brighten up the town. So we brought all the lights in made things pretty and bright and and the pumpkin pies and the powerhouse bridge but we just wanted to pick up morale um kyle news threw together a jubilee that was fantastic we talked to her as well as about you know we can plan a great event there there will always be a jubilee we plan on doing it this year it's we just couldn't do it last year so those are the main four events. We have some little like pop up things we could do throughout if we have time or the desire or just, you know, for people that want something different, we're open to that. But this is the base, and the idea is that we create it, we figure it out, um, we do it for a few years, it ends up running itself. Johnson loves it. You guys are popular. There's all these people, and there's a new mom or somebody who wants to come over and take over. And they can do it because it already runs smooth. So easy peasy, smooth click. Next screen, next screen. <laughs> so at Johnson Works, that was our old. And so we're playing with this. It's not that stone, but we were thinking of something like an acronym for like what we do. And we were basically bringing events back from what's the So we were playing with the word real and things like that. Next slide. So regardless of the name, the goal is to increase involvement and support, which we do not have. Because these events, right here, and my baby. And they're exactly. exactly. and whoever else needs to be like dragging off the street. And literally, it's three of us. Next slide. And so there's the definition for the word real, which totally pegs and fits all of our um what's the word I'm thinking about? Like 
it's not our goal, but like our values, right? Mission like, statement or mission something. Statement, like basically the definition of real is up there and all the different meanings of it, and it all fits on, okay. on where we're coming from. So there's a little like play on maybe what our goal or something would look like. Really, yeah, it's really not important because I we need a person to do that. I'm not that person. So then we would no longer have a web page because it's so outdated and such a headache, and nobody really has time for that. But you guys could highlight us on your town revised, revitalized website because I think you're doing that. I hope you're doing that. And then you're like, hey, there's this event, Johnson, come see us. Here's all the information. Click this button. Oh, we have it. And then we'll have a Facebook page or Instagram. That's really because, yeah, they connect each other in the um, And that's it. Is there another one? I think there is. Oh, here's what we need from you. This is the most important piece. So we, <laughs> we, we're very transparent. We always have been. Uh, there are some fellows in the town who feel otherwise. So instead of us holding this account like we've been doing, um, we want you guys to have the account or a transparent or pass through account or something. And that way it's public knowledge of what it is, but it is for these specific purposes. So basically if we get donations or we get businesses to support all of that money, we would like it to go through John, like the town of Johnson so that you would hold the account. We could, however it works, get reimbursed or, or I, I'm not I think it's just, it, yeah, we, we're not asking for funds. We're going to raise our own funds and do everything, but we just need a legitimate way. Oh, you guys can put it in the so budget book so everyone sees, oh, here's what they've made. This is what they're, not, what, whatever you need, we're fine with it. We're just trying to appease everybody. Bank, we already have an account. It's it's pretty easy, except for we'd have that extra transparency. But there is no nonprofit. It's, I think that we could do all the fundraising because we're just a group of volunteers. Is that right? And you guys already have insurance because you're a town and all this public space for people to fence all the time without even your permission. So, so. according to my insurance. Thanks for the last thing. <laughs> <Bye. laughs> yeah. um, your full presentation next time you slide. There may be a thank you slide after. <laughs> <laughs> there, there she is. <laughs> so to sum it up, the request is uh, for do donations from individuals to come to the town and then non-town committee member, but presumably only you three can decide on how to spend that money. Sure. And when you pass off the torch, you'll inform the town who you're passing on the torch to. Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, somebody oh, else wants it. And we're, we're not, we're not, not passing the torch like anytime soon. Well, uh, that. I have a five year plan. I, yeah. I'm not saying you're passing the torch tomorrow. Just asking what the succession plan would be. And it sounds verbal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And honestly, if nobody wants to continue this, like, you guys have extra money in your budget. Like, that we there's no benefit. Or I'm going to go buy like 200 pies and get yeah. them all away. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. Does the board have questions? You're certainly done I, a lot of work. I, I have some, but let's entertain the board's questions first. Is it your desire to remain a private group in some capacity, a non town? Affiliated, I mean, we would have the fiduciary control over the accounts, mm -hmm. but you would still be, you wouldn't be a town committee, you wouldn't be, you know, a 501c3. Um, is that your desire? Yes. Mm -hmm. We still have to go and like ask permission for the event annually, you know. In Which we yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, and my follow up. To that is, is there, I guess, I mean, a formal way or even an informal way that someone interested in joining your group and helping plan could join? Yes. That's so it's not even formal. Give me a call or text me. Got me on the street. We have a whole list of people who suddenly want to help. They don't want to be a titled, like, they want to, they want to help when they can. They don't want the full on commitment. And that's fair. Like, I will. I am happy to build this. I'm doing this literally for my own personal like ease of my young kids. As soon as they age out, 
I have no interest in really doing this. If I can bring this to my town, it, there's no reason. It, it's easy for me. My background is events. Like it's it's easy for me. I just need a little help. In. It'd be nice to not have the political nonsense involved in it, which is really what we've been fighting for the past year. So that's all we're trying to remove. It's unnecessary. Girls, Mary. Has the town done? It's done thing up this mayor financially in the past. It's always been the town committee. Yeah, that is my question. How, I thought town committees took money or got a, a budgeted amount. Oh, so a town committee is a town committee that has members of the committee. I understand um, your some people's wishes to not be titled. Um, but you know, that's no different than the Johnson Historic Society has non members that show up to help. Mm -hmm. I, I believe, right? I mean, that's right there. There's non members that show up to help when they want on things that they don't yeah. do. That's it. Um, truthful statement. Another committee, yeah, as well. Yeah. I think, I think the community of has people that show up that aren't part of the committee to help. And, and I think the other part of your question was uh, not every committee has. Allocated funds. Um, some do, and some don't. But we have multiple committees that don't accept any taxpayer funds. Right? Yeah, I think the Alden um, um, Committee. So it's not a lot. Legion Le 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 Field is I great mean, at not taking taxpayer yeah, funds. Yeah, right? Legion Field is an excellent example. It's self funding. Yeah. Then pay. I think yeah. it's the same idea. Well, right. But there is a committee. Yeah. So I was whole, on that committee. Wholeheartedly, I have a concern about the structure of it because. It's not structured as a committee. I think the intention is great. Um, and it sounds like it's kind of just turned into a community events that that's the interest in. And they're great. I hear a lot of really good things about it. Yeah. Being just three individuals using the talents of pass through, pass through yeah. I understand the point behind it. I, we already have 11 committees, but I would be more comfortable if it was structured as a committee what does that look like uh should i throw it out ask any one of the other 11. <laughs> um i each committee is a little different uh historic society is really well organized uh, but they're all organized in their own sense but the they, they kind of came to the town right and asked the town to form a committee and they had a <laughs> paper that said what their intention and we just did the rail trail committee 11 months ago yeah the rail trail committee was uh, probably a fairly good example yep we asked to have a purpose statement basically of the organization of, you know so what they and then we do a point membership yep we appoint members and you know when they request to resign we accept their resignation but that's what it is and i think their purpose statement was something along the lines of i could send it to you really here or anybody here can. i'm kind of familiar with the committees because i have worked on a couple of different ones and i chose one or two things i tried to wrap up today so i think our again our struggle is going to be because there's for if it's a committee there's you need note takers you need you need a treasurer you need those are all the things that we struggle to get to be johnson works so i don't think that we're going to have any credits but, but, the, but the minute part is pretty the pretty right. Right. Yeah. yeah yeah starting are required you don't yeah. you aren't required to have a treasurer but okay. the town has a treasurer very important person i think as long as we have because i know with tuesday night live i mean that takes a lot this is not necessarily as complicated as that could be. Um, it's not a ton, depending on, uh, you know, if you write every word down or if you give the general consensus. And I mean, in the slide, it was asking for transparency, having a public vote, produce minutes on what happened in their meeting, we just spoke some earlier, sure. is very transparent. So I understand that, but when you spent a year and a half trying to get people to come to these meetings and it, no one comes, like, what is the point? Like, this, this is why we ended up where we are today. We've done this, we've been doing this, and it's exhausting, and it takes away from our real jobs. This same thing happened when I was in Beecham. 
it's identical. And I don't know if you've ever been to Beecham, it's a town of 700 people, but we get 3,000 people for a tractor parade. We get 3,000 people for a winter carnival, and we get tour buses from around the country for fall foliage. All of those, including events, have a pass through account like this, where it's just a group of people who work together, and there's a transparent, audible, and accountable to how the money is spent. Not how the decisions are made, but how the money is spent. So the people get together, they have to follow the purchasing policy. So say, but the money, it, all those events don't cost the town anything. So they, but when they make a donation, they make the donation to the town of Johnson in this case, Easter egg hunt, it goes, Rosemary puts it into that account. When they need to go buy the Easter eggs, they have to have two signatures just the same to sign off on it, but the money gets reimbursed or they use an account just the same. But it just, what it does is it makes the event fun and less bureaucratic. It like takes the minute part and the agenda part away and like the meeting part away. And it's like, guys, we just want to make an event happen or a group of moms or a group of dads. We just want to get this going. Um, if we if we slog down too much, I think we're going to lose the fun. And I think that's kind of what's happened with the 501c3 is what I'm hearing, because they're trying to like get the slog off and still make Johnson awesome again, you know? Um, in Peachum, what is the the setup of those groups? Are are they town committees or are they just unaffiliated groups? It's, it's folks, but no bills can be paid without crossing the select boards. More. They follow the current policy just the same. So, like a purchasing agent in this case would be Carrie. So Carrie would have to sign. It. <clears throat> That's so to use a really radical example. Forgive me, but I'm going to use it anyway. I want to decide a. I want to create a Nazi party of uh, Johnson, oh, and I want to use the town of Johnson as a fiscal agent. I'm going to follow all of, all of the purchasing policy issues, the et cetera. This is very, very strong difference. The town is sponsoring the four events. So they're town events, and you just found a volunteer to run those town sponsored events. Is the town sponsoring your Nazi party? Uh, I, well, I would hope they wouldn't. But, um... <laughs> well, I don't think you're going to get votes. Or probably, probably not, but but I don't. I, 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 I the yeah. part that I'm having a struggle with is the money in and who gets to make those decisions about those. I mean, right now we we are talking about town sponsored. Event. I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. I voted. I voted in favor. If no of money. Sponsoring that. Hey, don't interrupt, Sorry. please. Um. So, and I'm really I don't care what they did, preacher. This is Johnson. We got to try and do what we can for Johnson. And I understand that, you know, you guys are doing good work and it's really important stuff. And I, I get that. I like it. But what I want to be sure of is that we, A, I want to be sure that if you dissolve the entity and the town assumes some liability or responsibility for funds, Rose, Rosemary has an important part in this too. She's, you know, she's treasurer. I don't believe she can use a, a bank account that you established as a 501c3. We can open into a bank account. But you've got to close the other one first. So somehow you've got we don't to have close. A 503c. We have it for five years. They right? don't. They like it doesn't exist. In order to get it back, how did you get the checking account? It's the same one that has been handed down for 10 years. Maybe? So was it an opened as a 501c3? No clue. Couldn't tell you. Oh, uh, well, you, that's Probably. something you can get an answer to. Do I, you know that's right? be rude, but I, I don't know. No, we wouldn't well, know because it, we had nothing to do with it. It was a 501c3. I think we need to do all we can to help this group instead of uh, putting the old box. We've got to come to some kind of solution. Do you have a proposal? Well, no, I don't. That's why we're discussing all of this right now. But, you know, I, I don't. I don't think we should be dismissing it out of hand. I'm not dismissing it out of hand. I'm trying to figure out a way that we can do it that makes sense. Rosemary has, you know, you talk about accounts. Um, if we're doing accounts, 
you have to have a reserve fund in order to actually dedicate or guarantee funds go for that purpose. We don't have a reserve fund. No, can I say something? That would have to go on probably. Yeah. It's, we, I, I joined Johnson Works two one years ago. This would be my third. So two Jubilees ago. We didn't do last year's how did we did the one before. <clears throat> I think the one before that was the one that we did. Um maybe that's wrong. I don't know. I can't do math right now. Too late. But the point is, is I asked Joey, who was basically doing this by herself, because everybody else who was committed literally like just didn't ever show up. And I said, how do you guys make money? And she said, we don't. So I threw together a raffle in less than a week's time for the Jubilee and raised what, $400, 200, three something, a measly couple hundred dollars off of my dollar raffle, going together, reaching out to every business that's in this town with 22 little donations of like, you know, here's some chocolates, here's a sweater, here's a horseback riding weapon, like all, all of it. It was great. Perfect, wonderful. Like, so learned from it how to make more next time because people don't carry cash, whatever. And then I was like, how can we raise money to do the next event? So that <clears throat> that couple hundred dollars that we started started that Easter egg hunt. Everyone was so excited. They're like, I'll give you candy, I will give you eggs, I will give you whatever. All the businesses have supported me. And they just want this back in our town. We used to have it, and we haven't had it for years. I have a 20-year-old. I used to bring her to all of these events. I have a seven-year-old now. They don't exist in this town. They don't exist in our county. And it's just a, terrible that it's just hard for you guys to like look outside of how it's always been done. Jo I, Johnson Works, you guys can keep the name. Keep it on your books. Do whatever. I can start over and do zero dollars and start up. You can have that account. I am not going to be part of Johnson Works anymore. I do not like going into businesses and having the same conversation about what Johnson Works was or did or whatever before my time. I don't care. I'm trying to have an event. I'm trying to bring people to my hometown and I'm trying to do stuff for my kids. You can say, no, I'm not gonna do it anymore or I'm just gonna do it on my own somewhere else. As far as the bank account goes, I'm sure it was opened with all of the parameters put in place. I'm good. It was opened a long time ago. It wasn't, the bank account wasn't even used for five or six years. Once um, COVID, we didn't do events for, I mean, it wasn't used in, until before COVID at least. And then we had to approve some things to the bank, which we did. And so we had to see how, but I'm sure it was open with all of that. I think we we have a tendency to get a little bit into the weeds, and that is sort of our job here <clears> is <throat> to talk about all of the details of things that come across our tables and talk about what are the, the pros and cons of doing things, what are the things that we might not be thinking about when we're going into it. I think I, I can only speak for myself, but I think I am certainly very supportive of the work that you have done. I could care less about the name of the organization that you're a part of. Um, the work that you're doing is important and, and, you know, should be supported, has been supported. I think for me, the, the cleanest way to move forward here is for you to be a, either a 501c3 or a town committee, because both give you, under my understanding, the ability to fundraise money in the way that you have been. And, you know, yes, that old bank account is connected to the old 501c3. I don't no nonprofit law anymore any better than Duncan does, probably much worse than Duncan does. I assume that there's there's some reasons why that connection matters, you know. Um, I don't know which of those two options is preferable to you, a new 501c3 organization affiliated with a town or becoming a town committee. I, for one, would love to see a town events committee uh, doing the same work that you're doing. I haven't pushed it because you have been doing great work for the last couple of years and it's not really, I, you know, I, I see it happening and so I'm not gonna try to take your job away. Um, I think one concern we also have too is once you become a town committee, um, then there's also, you could all be telling us what kind of events you would like us to have. And I don't think that that is necessarily what we're interested in either. 
Um, we really want to put these events together that we've been doing, but we don't. We're we're one hundred percent volunteers doing this in our own time and our own. Um, and I know from being on Johnson Works how much the town would would email me and try to get me to participate in all these other things with my own volunteer time that I eventually completely burned out and that's where we're at. Well, which still <laughs> happens and Johnson Works doesn't exist in that capacity anymore and it hasn't for years. Volunteer, yet. volunteer fatigue. It's not it's even that. Fatigue. It's like, it, it's not, it's not at all what it originally was built to be and, and it hasn't been. So, but everybody still uses that name and like, it's like the whole, like, even with the rail trail, it's like, oh, Johnson Morrison do this. Johnson Morrison, Johnson Morrison is literally like two people. Like Johnson Morrison is not doing any of that. It's, but it's, I, I can completely understand where you guys are coming from. You want there to be a one or the other and you want it to be legitimate. You don't want to go outside the realm of what everybody else is doing because then you might have a whole bunch of other people that Roseberry could work 90 hours a week trying to Put money in different accounts. I completely understand. That. I can tell you, we don't get that many donations. We <laughs> get them when I go and knock on the door a month leading up to the event. That's it. Uh, can we take a, a quick temperature of the board here? We don't need to bulk. Um, I'll go first. I share Shane's. <laughs> Hardly, um, Breck is having some volunteer fatigue, but in my mind, I saw this as a good fit a subcommittee of the rec committee that was just community events that was the subcommittee and that way um you know the three of you are working hard but let's say uh five more people wanted to be involved in the events wanted to change you're not stuck to a single platform because um, it, it just fit good at the subcommittee in my mind do you think we could do these events and just have it be under the rec committee? Every committee can have a subcommittee. The, the Historic Society has a building the grounds committee. They have a, do they have a finance committee? They have subcommittees. That's that's my only thing. <clears throat> um, and that's just subsets of people that are on the Historic Society that are passionate, I'm not trying to put words in their mouth, about a certain portion, or you know, think a certain portion needs more attention. Uh, but that's my temperature check, and I was just doing that before the rest of the board votes so that people are mad they came out. Now, 40 years ago, the temperature of the board. 40 years ago, it was called the Johnson Business Alliance. Many years ago, then it morphed into Johnson Works, must be. You I know, want to say Johnson Business. You, you remember that, Casey? It was the Johnson <laughs> Business Alliance. Matter. What's that? I said it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. But I mean, that's where it started from, I think. And this is where we are today. Um, but I, I think we ought to find a way to, to support uh, this real group any way that we can have it, have it fit into Rosemary, whether we should ask her whether she feels as if it's uh, doable or is even something she wants to do. You know what she is? It's down yeah. She is so, the treasurer. If um, if somebody should donate two hundred and fifty dollars by IRS code, they have if if they're going to take a tax deduction, they have to have a letter from the nonprofit or the sponsoring entity indicating that that has been done. You probably don't have too many people. Can have I get more dollars. than that all the time. Yeah. And nobody's ever wanted or cared to have it as be a tax write off because they know that we don't invest on it. However, I see what you're saying and I'm happy to write a letter. Every volunteer we've ever had. Well, you can't it. write Rosemary anyway. She doesn't because have to sign she's it. the treasurer. She just mm -hmm. has to sign it, technically. What? She just has to sign it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, know. I suppose if you wrote it up, the proper I mean, way. Yeah, you, have a form form letter. you have a form letter. You could have a form letter and just yeah, put sure. the dollar amount in or yeah, whatever cool. was donated. Yeah. yeah. So there's no big deal. And then people could use it as a tax write off. I mean, you can use smaller donations as a tax write off, but if it's 250 or more, you have to have a letter of law. If they want it. Yeah. yeah. 
Right. If 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 someone's going to claim it as a tax, they've got to have in their tax return a copy of that. I you know if I donated ten bucks, I could I could just claim that on my taxes. But if the IRS audits me, I've got to be able to show that I actually paid that money. I understand that. You have a small working group and you're working good together. Are you afraid that if you get affiliated with the town and more people want to join and then you'll have a situation that too many cooks follow the broth? No, it has nothing to do with too many people wanting to join. I'd okay. love too many people to join. The problem is if the people coming at you being like, oh, well, let's do an event for this. Let's I'm going to do as an example. Mm -hmm. Rosemary's retirement, why don't you the event committee? Can really plan that, do that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not time for it. I don't okay. um, You basically <laughs> want to do the four things that you, and you we, established yeah, already. Last year we added in the pie, you know, we threw up like, like little things like that would be the added, but basically just like let Joss be known for these great four things that people can put on their calendar and come to. It benefits the entire town. It That's benefits true. every business in this town. I know. We haven't gotten through the temperature check here. Well, I'm for it. You're for pass through a cap. Through He's for pass through a cap. You heard my opinion. Who wants to go next? I kind of gave my opinion. Okay. We're kind of in the line. So we're kind of in I, I think they should be so I I really feel like you've got three people that are doing incredible work. Um that are it's very popular, but I don't see how what sort of precedent this establishes. Any any people in the community that want to do things um, you can look to the town, can look to the town, the fiscal agent, and um, that feel they should do it. Well, there's a lot of things that should. I mean, they could do. It. They could. They could if they if, if this isn't the. They're threat. probably a five hundred one C three. Are they? Well, that I'm sure they are. That's yeah, I know that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but you don't know how it's really good. I, I have the same concerns. I would rather, much rather, see them either as a committee, subcommittee, or a 501c3. I mean, you can change your name to REAL as a, as a new committee. In terms of. You have to have officers. You have to have officers and board members. And that's where we. But that's so a committee we, would be a lot easier. <laughs> No. In that regard, um, to meet in the middle and to throw an idea out there because it sounds like uh, the three of you need to talk out of tonight. Um, general consensus of the board right now is it would be more comfortable as a committee or subcommittee. I threw out the idea uh, of subcommittee, but in your guys' discussions, you could throw around the idea. I hear about great passion about four events, and you guys kill it at four events in your. Purpose letter or mission statement, it could just say we want to be a subcommittee and we want to focus on these four events. We would, and then you could send a request to the board that you'd like a reserve fund made that any money that you guys raise rolls over into. That has to be in front of the voters. We can't decide that. And you could say any money left over, uh, the board would like to vote on that meeting if they'd like to do an additional event or whatever. Um, there are requests that go to all of our committees that our citizens said don't always get that. I, I hear this the stress part. I'm just trying to meet in the middle with board's wishes that fits what you guys do. So if you if we do that, you we have to vote we have to have that voted in through the public. If you want a reserve fund, the taxpayers have to approve it. So that means we have to wait for the next town meeting. To create the reserve fund, if there's money in an account they can be there. The mm -hmm. great reserve fund would be a company. Why do we need reserve fund? If you want to keep money that you raised this fiscal year to spend on the next fiscal year, mm -hmm. you would need funds there, correct? The minute somebody donates money to the town, that money actually becomes town funds. It doesn't, it's not dedicated funds for the duck race. So it's town funds. Yeah. But if we had a reserve fund, any donations collected could be put into that reserve fund and the wording of that reserve fund could be something like funds cannot be spent out of this money except for this purpose the race the four events 
It seems like there's a, a, gap, a little gap of queasiness in, like, on both sides, understandably. And but it's you know you guys want it to happen, they want it to happen. Seems like a subcommittee is an easier way to be able to do the formal things that would be needed for the town account and such. Can, can those uh, details and conversation just be worked out? Separately. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just relaying the wishes of the board. Right. Well, in, if, in general, and I was throwing out some ideas because yeah. I said at the beginning, I realized you guys are probably going to have to have a conversation. So, my second question is a subcommittee. How does that work? You right, mentioned just, rec. Exactly. So, what is it like? Oh, like, rec. I. Rec's having volunteer fatigue right now. Yeah. Um, rec is having more than that right now. Well, we're going to talk about honest. rec next. So I'm excited for that. But I like if rec was perfect and great and ran like it used to, because it used to be phenomenal, what would that look like for a subcommittee under rec? Boy, for a subcommittee, the committee already exists, right? So it does. And, uh, you know, me personally, if you want it to be a standalone committee, I'm that's not yeah. Yeah. No, we've got 11. We went to uh, 12. <laughs> Even <laughs> dozen. A standard, a standard committee, you guys could come up with a write-up of what you'd like, and it could be structured that way. I feel like I should say, and then some committees to say how many board members they want. Some are infant. We haven't ever filled them. Um, what would a subcommittee look like? I would say that you could go to a committee that fit. They could form their own subcommittee. Yeah. What was your question? Like, what does that look like? What does that look like? Yeah, you would go to rec a meeting and say, we'd like to form a subcommittee with this purpose. I think we, I mean, we, would we have the ability to form a subcommittee under rec? Would it need to, because I mean, I don't know that there we is a rec committee right now. We probably could. In all honesty, I think a committee, if to try and answer Carrie's question, I think a subcommittee typically presents an idea of our concept to the overall committee, which then gets approved to presents it to us. So my thought is if they're just their own committee, they skip the step of presenting it to the rec committee, who then presents it to us, they would present it directly to the board. But it was more consistent. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it could be a perfectly good concept for a subcommittee, but I think a committee for what they're doing is just makes more sense to be a standalone committee. Yeah. Yes. But that then entails that having officers and taking minutes. And it doesn't. No, they can be a committee appointed by us. I mean, they can. you can choose to have a chair or not. Um, generally speaking, more efficient, I think, if you have a chair of a committee. Goes on a meeting and stuff like that. But I think the one thing they would have to do would be to take minutes. And the minutes can be one page. I mean, they could be we met on July 25th. These people were present. We talked about X um, and we adjourned at 3 30. I mean, our meetings were really text messages. Like, that's the thing. Like, we're not, like, the reason of not doing this that way is because, like, our meetings are while I'm driving somewhere in the car and someone, she's at the farm stand and someone else is, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the whole point of not doing it in the traditional manner it's been worked in is because it doesn't work. It's like, this isn't my job. I, I'm a very, very busy person, whether you believe so or not, and I'm making the time for these events. I'm doing it kind of as a selfish thing, but also because I believe that our town should have these events. They used to, the leaders used to do the egg hunt all the time. They stopped because they are through it. Their kids aged out. They don't. There's no benefit for them anymore, and it's a pain in the butt because of all the public. Public's a pain in the butt. Like we all know that. But you're but asking the town to do something. So I think there could and should be a little bit of give and take here. I mean, to an extent, because it benefits you a hundred percent. Like it, this is a this is a Johnson Town benefit. So I, I I'm I will sit on that. I'm happy, I'm gonna stay because I want to hear the rest stuff, but I 
I honestly, like I'm trying to make this so much easier for me. And if I'm a committee, then you need to find a place that, you know, I know that sounds aggressive, but like then the town needs to find the space to keep all this stuff. I have 30,000 Easter eggs in my barn right now. I don't want that, but I do. So, and same with all the other stuff. So it's, I just, I, I'm happy to continue doing this, but I, I need something too. And I, I don't want to be told I have to have a meeting every Monday or the third Monday of every month and write it down and show somebody. Like, I have no, I don't have time for that. I have other meetings. I don't think anybody said you had to have a meeting every Monday. But you know you what it's like? You could be three times a year. I, I think the, the point is when, yeah, when the meetings are as informal as shooting text messages or a phone call to each other, then a subcommittee does not fit with that. And that's we can't do that. Well, right. And and you, know, you have open yeah. meeting law, right, wrong, or otherwise, the legislature gave us open meeting law, which means I can't send an email to all board members that involves town business. Three board members can't have coffee. And three board um, members can't have coffee. I mean, without warning it as a meeting. And it's going to get it worse come January, right? Probably. Hang on, guys. <laughs> Donna's usually well spoken and she has her hand up. Well, I was just thinking if, if it's a subcommittee that is has fewer people on it than a quorum of the committee, then can't they just meet informally and text each other? Like, I mean, I guess it's a issue. Why is there a board back up to the committee? Yes. And then that those decisions, that's the idea behind why a subcommittee has to report to the committee because then it gets into the committee minutes. Are they going to fall into the old well, meeting law being televised like all the other ones are supposed to be? I mean, You've got that to worry about, though. Um, not yet. I know, but eventually, yeah. So, I think some conversations need to be had. Um, we'll, we'll be in the top. Yeah, you can, but this board is what's going to decide. No, no, no. I know. I just mean that we go through the help us yeah, on your just to help us to organize what you said and what we said and organize to come back and. That's I would be happy to take any board member here. You can contact individually. Okay. Can't do three or more without a question. Two or more. Two or well, more. You, you guys can send an email to us. We can't, as a group, respond back to you. Okay. But, but you individual can board members can respond. Us, unless it's less than. Not three. us. Not about yeah. town business. Two of us, We could have coffee and talk. How do you have horses? coffee without bringing up any town meeting? Business. That's insane. We just don't have time. We don't. We don't. We don't socialize. We don't. We don't see each other outside of this space. <laughs> it's really bad. Um, I would like to. I would like to close with just saying that I've heard everybody say, "Thank you guys. You knock it out of the park." I think it's a liability standpoint where we're looking at it. We've heard you. I appreciate it. It's just me until somewhere. Understood. And we've heard you too. Yeah, and I really support what you're doing, and I really support the idea of the town. Providing the insurance coverage and, and sponsoring that. And I appreciate you not to be rude, but you kind of mocked me last year when I came at you with these things, but then you did buy two ducks. So I was very close to your name on you that. You got money. Uh, oh, so thank you. You want to get money from a select board member, go to the chief one in the corner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we do need to move on. Thank you for the request. I think REC is going to be relatively quick. Um, but that's handy because we ran 20 minutes over on the other. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so the rec coordinator job description uh, has been sent out to board members. You do. It was not enough time for me to read it and go through it uh, adequately. But if anybody else wants to talk about it, uh, we can. I would like to talk about it at our next meeting a little bit more in depth. Uh, from the board's wishes, somebody else like to say something. Yeah. Hearing what? Somebody. What? What about the idea of posting? Do, do we think we need a revised job description before posting? I mean, if you post an ad. And somebody gets in touch with mom and asks for the job description. 
he would be able to say this is, is an unapproved job description provider, uh, but it wouldn't be the accepted job description, right? And it's it's cart before the horse, or it's not a heavy cart, so you can pull it back. Does that make sense? How different I have a chance to look at a chance to figure out the same thing. How different is it from? There's not a lot of difference. Um, there was some language that was outdated, like there was a reference to the Duma fields as a, you know, certain things that could be changed. Um, there was a little bit of clarification about who the position reports to. Uh, so now it is clearer that it is the report to the town administrator and also to the select board. Uh, whereas that was very unclear before. Um, and there's also a little bit of clarification about uh, the role of the uh, committee in relation to the coordinator, because uh, that was a concern that I heard quite a bit was that the committee felt like they were sort of pushed aside out of the loop a little bit. Uh, so other than that, there was not really any major changes that I made. I did kind of, you know, one line um, in the, the the first line of the skills and career and training required. It was a little bit firmer on the the requirement of a bachelor's degree. So I said, uh, bachelor's degree in recreation or other appropriate discipline is preferred. However, relevant work experience will also be strongly considered, just to make it more clear that that wasn't a requirement. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Good piece of So I guess my my fundamental question still is out there maybe telling you could weigh in how important we think it might be to get the ad out there for the position. I think we could put the ad out right away and yeah, we could take the job description on put on the website as as Yeah, and just say, you know, subject you know, subject to change. I mean, it's not going to change that much, right? Or any One of the board's wishes. I would be supportive of posting it. Yeah. I think the sooner the better. I kind of feel like we should be out there. Exactly. We need a motion. I'm excited. You have three members and support. You guys can make it a formal motion if you want, but anyway. And are we putting in news and things in as well? I mean, in print. Yeah. And money. We want a hot tag person. Come on. The LCP. I would put it on the LCP classic plates. So yeah. Any other, any other place we can pick up with money? Are there who who can it for the email? You're asking for the paper and you're asking for the paper. Are you going to make it roll over something? Like it is roll. Better hands. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Facebook Marketplace for jobs. You could put it on the town Facebook page. Okay. Um, can we do we need to authorize any kind of a budget for going into the process there? Yeah, we're going to get policy. So okay. actually, before we yeah. get to that, I'm going to throw out there's also uh, the Vermont Recreation and Parks Association, which okay. has all sorts of job postings yeah. uh, for the yeah, recreation. Okay. Do you or something? I do believe that there is the already interest in the job. Really? And do we have do we have an hourly rate range? Because you're going to be asked. It just says salary and benefit package we've been to It does. You and can't. You've good. got to have more than that. I mean, the, the well, ad I, might I, like, like it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I think people might be more interested in more interested. some kind of. We would need to have that answer, answer, answer for ourselves before introduce. Well, of course, because it people is. wouldn't come to an interview if they didn't know what to pay. Oh, exactly. Exactly. I don't think well, we do to... know we do know what the current one is that could that be given by father of reference point reference point and range? Certainly. Yeah. I, I feel like you could. I think we have to put the pay range. In the uh, in the posting starting July first. Yes, because you just 
it's kind of the salary and benefit package to be negotiated with the select board subject to personnel policy annually based on satisfactory job performance. Well, would a person be hired then have to go negotiate their pay? Can I it should take, be spelled out. Can I take the old one's hourly rate, round it to a nice average number and go up and down $2? Yes. Experience? I think um, I was uh, it, uh, it's just starting the fiscal year going up $2 yes. or down. Could be down. <laughs> they could take less, yeah. yeah. Or go down to and then you can go over down. Well, well, people need to have a range. If you've got a range, yeah. then you know what Mike is saying is right. You can you can then negotiate an actual sale. Yeah. Based on but if you don't have a range, you know, the market's going to you're not going to have you you may not have anybody apply. Well, and it's uh, sounding like Tom's saying that now it's legally required that we put it as of seven one. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's a brand new thing. Oh, do we know anything about that? I'm not familiar with that, but boy, oh boy. If you do a job posting, you have to get the post to say, wait, wait, that runs it back to me. Yeah. That runs. The job ad is a mine. You have to fire a pay range. Yes. Uh, the company is a really good meeting. It's going to be sitting through this whole meeting. I've stopped this meeting. Except like saying, <laughs> all right, are we comfortable yes. with? Yes. I think the board is comfortable. Yeah. Um, unless there's any other comments, our next item is River Road East. Uh, there is a write up in Tom's report. Is there anything else to report? It says possible decision. Decision on what, Tom? Oh, it's just if the board wanted to take further action beyond uh, what the health officer, how the health officer can handle me. Any logic, BJ, possibly? Currently, just. Dean is working on this. BJ has not. Um, and Dean is at, he's on vacation, but he was texting me that they have agreements. Um, so Dean checks in every other week to make sure there's progress and there is progress happening. Um, albeit slow, they are moving forward. Um, this would Board is okay with that. Um, I know the United Way more so is looking at looking into ways to help the volunteers to help the progress in the community and progress um, in the site. And there's updates every couple of weeks. Wouldn't be too much to ask the health officer to send those photos to the board for it. Maybe. I, I totally agree. I, I personally think that that's a situation that's been out there a long time. It needs to be dealt with. It's one of those issues, Mike, that, you know, it's <laughs> unfinished business that we should wrap it up to get it done. Since you got on the board the first time. Yeah, that's been going on since before you got on the board. Well, I agree, but I would have thought that had been cleared up while I was gone for two years. And it's still there. <laughs> Were you, were you the roadblock? Is that it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. yeah. Oh. Okay. So I think it's we had COVID during that time, too. It's entirely it's appropriate to have no. updates on where we are and what progress is actually being made. It's it's really easy to lose track of those kinds of things. And we, we shouldn't. We shouldn't lose track. Certainly not. Can you get that request to the health officer? Shooting over there. Okay. Any further questions or comments on River Road East? Um, next update uh, is the dilapidated building on 100C. Um, this report says that uh, you're pretty confident that they will be completed by their originally proposed plan of 8 1. It does look like a lot of work is happening over there. They're doing a good job. The holes, the holes filled in, it's been backfilled. Um, in the fence, the main issues were the hole and the fence. You know, if you've got a hole, there's no need for a fence. So I think we're probably ready for a final inspection, you know, inspection search to just verify there's no more. That's what's yep. That was ditch fill, probably. Up there, right? well, it's, it's amazing how fast that solved itself. It's great. Yeah, yeah, they once take once you found the right part, you can interact. Yeah, it went, it went great. Yeah. <clears throat> they did. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Next item, the animal control officer update on recent concerns, but it looks like we have uh, right up there. Uh, so I spoke with the person who made the complaints and this, uh, just because Queen was on vacation again. Yeah. Um, and she said since I last spoke with her when she made the complaint, there's been no more issues. Um, and then I did. You texted me today an update just to say that the owner of the dogs has been warned um, and that Dean will be uh, sending tickets because of multiple offenses um, when he gets back and that the owner of the dogs is aware that those tickets are coming. Are the dogs practically licensed? Are they coming out of work? Um, the two dogs, do okay. you know what I was Yes, that's why they're getting tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Because they're not licensed, it's not an issue because they have not registered the dogs. And this brings up an interesting point on the end of the local. So, in order to get your dog registered, you have to have proof of rabies vaccine. And in the past, we have had situations where they actually had to physically, they didn't have an up-to-date rabies certificate. So they physically had to bring the dog. And so the dog was under impoundment. The animal control officer had to give a release to allow the dog, you know, the owner rabies. to pick up the dog to bring it to get its rabies shot. So that the certificate could be given to Rosemary to license the dog. And then they had to bring the dog back to the pound or pay all of them fees and fines and penalties before getting the dog released to them. Um, in that side issue, but in that in a local agreement, that is a real issue in my opinion. Yeah. That is a future yeah. topic of tonight. Yeah. But but that dog is currently being held under the at that full so I park bounds, right? Not from the town Johnson. That's sure. Next sure. update. Oh, that's right. That's next update. Thank you. are rolling right into it. Are we good with that update? Yeah, that's good. The contract covers that. Any further questions from the board on that one? And you haven't had any pushback from Roger on? No. Okay. He doesn't know the bill yet. <laughs> well, we'll subtract it. So you can it when you come to it. I didn't tell the sheriff to build a fan. I just told him. Can't work. <laughs> Oh, you'll hear. <laughs> One of you watching me. Stop right. Next update, I believe, is yours, Duncan. Yeah, and this will be great. Um, this will be great. Uh, Randall and I have communicated. We thought the thing that made the most sense, given Bob Fletcher's letter, um, was to communicate with community development and affairs folks to see if they will give their blessing to the town borrowing from the Little Law and Home Fund. We, they had posed a series of questions. We provided a series of answers. I think I've been sent from the yeah. board. Um, and we have yet to hear back from the community. community to not say they've got a bunch of vacations going on. But it's not, it's not that they're not wanting to respond to our questions. They're just people out of the office. So I expect yeah. we will hear back fairly soon. Um, and I will say that Bob Fletcher in his most recent email basically said he would feel a lot more comfortable if um, BCVP said that they think it's a perfectly acceptable use. That's a good point. Thank you, Thank you very much for all your work on that. Uh, and next update. Uh, Jason covered some of it in this report, but he purchased the material for Girl Cemetery. And, uh, are you are you working on a boundary line? Yeah, stakes are around the edge. Uh, Jason and I are just going to meet and with a compass and just define them. Uh, I think we're up to we got it close to 130, 139 by one thirty one and. A half acre. I want to see if there's an original fee because the half acre is 140 by 140. So my thought is the intention of that cemetery is probably a true half acre. So we're gonna I'm gonna meet with the landowners to see if we can push it out to that. I guess because it's neat. I mean, 
if they agree to it, it should be fine. I, I can tell you, I spent hours looking all of this. That was part of the town of Sterling. All of the land records from the town of Sterling are at the town of Morristown. And I spent hours. You'd probably never see the deed. deed to you'd see the next deed accepting and reserving and half acre out. I looked, I looked, uh, I looked for everything. There was so many Deanna else. French did before me because Deanna helped put together uh, the book for the township, Sterling and the township, and she couldn't find any reference to growth in the period. So, so what's the, how do we move forward with this? Do we create a a deed right now, boundary line agreement. If if, if we can do a, a map or a description and they sign off on it and we record it, you don't even need a survey for a boundary line agreement. Essentially, you're yeah. meeting with neighbors and masonry lines and shaking hands, smashing a bottle of champagne. Morning. And you, you're using your GPS on your phone to get coordinates. Handshakes. Absolutely. I like. I mean, I like the GPS getting for well, it. has a GPS. So I can just put it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can put the cord. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not. Gonna, it's going to be accurate to it. Some. Oh, amount. Yeah, yeah, and there's some walls on two sides, so it's pretty obvious. But I think the important piece is getting the signatures and recording. Correct. I. I. Yeah. It's the, another thing that needs to be put to bed. There's wood sticks in the ground, and actually, Jason. The fence was so affordable, we actually bought enough to do split rail all the way around. So it was, really oh. cool. it was way, way less. And there's even extra to do repairs or find up another fence. Say Evergreen needs it or another cemetery needs it. Cedar? Uh, fresh trees. What was the idea? Spend the whole budget line item? It, it was about 3700 It was very. 37000 Not bad. Yeah. You should pretty good split rail. Okay. Uh, yeah. I think, are there further questions on Grove Cemetery? Nope. Nice nice item is what two people have been so patiently waiting for. Waiting here for a long time. You guys should have just asked him. So, <laughs> so we're, we're eight minutes early. So, <laughs> good job. We're trying to run on time <laughs> for, for one meeting a quarter. Or right up front. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, that probably would have been easier. Oh, good. Um, so we're here to talk to you guys about the upcoming pre application for the um, has mitigation grant program. Um, so the has mitigation grant program is funding that becomes available to communities um, post disaster to take actions that. Uh, would reduce uh, future damages, like Lee and Johnson were talking about flooding. Um, this upcoming round is unique for a couple of reasons. Um, one is just the sheer amount of funding available, um, likely $90 million or more statewide. Um, also, the governor uh, signed a budget and he was full coverage of the state match. Um, so that means there's not um, unnecessarily a, a match commitment from the municipality. Um, and then the final piece is that um, with this, the, the, this pre-application process, usually the way these funding sources work is there's an announcement of a grant opportunity and you have a very brief period of time to pull it together an application and you might not have time to do engineering or work. Um, there's going to be more time to do that this, this time. So what we are hoping um, is that we can leave tonight with um, a list of potential projects that Johnson would like to pursue a free application for. Um, it doesn't permit you to actually moving forward for the project, it's kind of putting it on a list for the state to be aware and giving it more of a letter of interest with a little additional details. Um, so anything that could reduce flooding in your community um, could potentially be considered. Um, generally, things like upsizing bridges and culverts, natural resource projects like um, 
floodplain restoration and the whole project that you've been working on. Um, the projects next door in Cambridge and Jeffersonville um, that uh, re reduced some of the damages after the Halloween storm, those were all funded with the hazard mitigation grant for wind tunnels. So um, based on discussions with Tom, uh, with the um, regional group that we've had a meeting, um, and some discussions with um, some of you, um, Melissa pulled together this list, um, the colorful document for tonight um, of some of the you know potential projects that uh, could be uh, put together. Um, we it will still take some work on LCPC's part to um, put this all together. So it, ideally tonight. Uh, we would like to walk away with your endorsement of like, yes, please work with appropriate staff at, at, at Johnson to start um, doing what needs to happen um, for that August 16th deadline. Um, and then as those you know, uh, are developed more, we come back to you to talk about details about what like, makes sense um, for the, the full round, which will be a much bigger, more intense federal round. Um, I'm going to start, stop talking, but then talking, um, and see if you guys have any questions about big picture. What is this HMGP in general or about the specific projects? Um, if there's anything that should be added, questions. So I do have just one question. For all of you, you'll see the road segments, bridges, and culverts where the to be determined next to that. I know Duncan you've raised this is looking at some of those. Um, to move that forward, we would need some more detail about specific, specifically what areas are part of concern. Um, happy to work with Tom and Jason um, to pull that together, but I want to make sure this select board is all right with that. that or if there's specific areas you all are thinking about, we can just have as well. Are you thinking in, in that category of the two state bridges or for these 10 out of the Yeah, we have um, yeah, we had included both of the Route 15 bridges um, on on the list for the, the applications. Um we were, we were thinking more town structures and savings because this is a fairly unique opportunity to get hundred percent. Grant funding, which you do have, you know, structures or savings of roads that have had frequent damages. Um, this would probably be a good time to try to get some. The common hollow road. Yeah, yeah, it's been flooding a lot. It's a river. What Where we are even not turning the river out. Oh, yeah. And yeah. are we losing that piece over there? That? Uh, we are. So we have. USDA funding for that. Yep. Um, I mean, I would be comfortable with solely me, not mm -hmm. being to the board. I would be comfortable with me talking to Tom and Jason about specific road segments. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily bridges or culverts, but the beginning of fog back is one of the first sections to flood. And it floods on the Dawson side and Cambridge side, it kind of leaves some people a little stranded. I will be interested in filling in the floodplain there. Um, that's <laughs> not the right thing. Um, well, well, you know, I say it <clears throat> with a sarcastic tinge, but uh, Punta Harbor Road is a perfect example of the same thing. Mm -hmm. They've rolled that for public good, understanding that. They raised the road. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm yeah. talking about that. That lower sag at the beginning of Hogback Road. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm understanding that's not yeah. a bridge or a culvert. Um, and again, I'm not speaking for the board. Yeah, just. Yeah, yeah Mark, you're really getting on with this, huh? So it's been the nick of time. <laughs> One thing we will have access to this year, um, all of Regional Planning Commissions are going to have access to some technical assistance for um, 
engineering to support the development of projects. And I'm glad you brought up that the um, Kit Harbor Road. Um, we have worked with the town of Cambridge to kind of river modeling, find the sort of optimum point of how high the road could be raised to reduce the, you know, the, especially in Garblet Hill, the isolation without displacing water. And that was kind of a sweet spot to do that. Um, and that is a kind of thing that with that technical assistance, we could look at Hotback Road too, if this yeah. level was interested in that. I mean, on top of the isolation that I installed, it costs us money mm -hmm. to send a $200,000 piece of equipment yeah. up there paying somebody well, one of forty 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 five dollars an hour for benefits. Yeah, to clean up after a flood, we didn't have to clean it up because it's flood. Mm -hmm. I think long term it would be better. And, and a number of years ago, we had a major road failure there, mm -hmm. and we ripped that bit. And now, oddly enough, there's a sand and gravel bank. Directly opposite, where we represent. Weird on that word. Yeah. Cause and effect. So, you know, maybe, maybe along with your idea, the idea of moving the road back a little bit. Good. If we're going to talk about that, let's talk about one way Well, I was going to say the same thing. And Rocky Roll. <laughs> For one segment of it. Uh, Who's the brain? Rocky Scouts. Yeah. That is, um, but and um, we'll cut looking at flat iron road that makes the moving road sort of up the hill and then opening up the floodplain a bay. Um, it's, it's, it reminds me of Ludway Road, the situation you've got there. Ludway would be an easy fix for the town village of the property. It's just beyond that point. It's just beyond that point. You get a ledge. And that's one of the reasons I bought up for the boys' development. It's a ledge. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but no matter what you're doing, so if we can throw in federal rail as well, and just make it a very fun project. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. okay. Uh, one thing I brought up, and uh, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know if it was report, but LCPC did a report with one mm -hmm. They identified four problems. I remember specifically for one of them was Holmes Meadow. Yep. One of them was the Meadow by the Hogback Bridge was put there. Yes. High water crossing for that bridge, am I correct? Yes. Yes. Those big culver structures on the Cambridge side of that bridge. Mm -hmm. And I didn't look it up in Florida to anybody after the meeting, but I was, again, taking up all the time here. It would be interested in all four of those. Okay. They're already identified. As having value to reduce floods by the flood model that this PC has an idea. I'll give everybody else the floor because I'm eating up all the time. We started eating minutes early with Ms. Seth and I, we're going to be half an hour late. Melissa, I'm just going to eat. Anything else? The one question I had for you, Seth, and maybe, maybe this is maybe a book, but are you going to be submitting these projects as LCPC on behalf of Johnson, or does Johnson have to submit a actual letter? We so there's not it's it, the application form is fairly simple. There's not a signature page from the town, but we would if and we we can assist with pulling it uh, together. We can assist with all the technical work. Um, yeah. We are going to do that and going to hit the submit button for you. We would like the select board, you know, on the record saying we're authorized to do that. Um, just so there's no question of why did this grant suddenly appear. Um, so is it your basic understanding that you, you'd be doing it in hitting the button? Or? I don't think I'm, I, I was under the impression the board would make a motion right. tonight to authorize you to move the grant forward and sign that was what we were hoping. It's okay. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just wanted to clear that specific projects. Yeah, about these to give them authorization on all of these projects and should any others come up tonight. That way they can move forward. Yeah. Anymore. If you would do these projects plus the ones that were discussed this evening. I would think 
I would make such a motion. Nobody's bringing up the plumb line. Drench River. Yeah, I'm not going to make that motion. Yeah. Um, um, water. It's right the river. Send the water to Cambridge. It's like this flood benching. I don't even know if I should have moved and, and could my motion include the fact that Seth can work with Don and Jason to identify any, identify any other yeah. specific locations? Have you made a motion? I think it is there. Donna, are you clear on that one? Do you know uh, what I said? Maybe you could repeat the first part of it. The first part was that the, the board authorizes LCPC uh, to submit. Do I need to identify the specific roads? No, I think it's projects as a whole. HMG as as identified on the flood mitigation projects list uh, prepared by LCPC. Um, plus any other uh, plus the correspondence uh, previously identified by the LCPC study. Plus, any additional thoughts that, that come to light through discussions with the government? Is that good? Are you doing so plus one road relocations? Or are we leaving that one out? Well, I, I we leave, can leave it out. I it's guess we just. Well, well you good. identified you identified that as that area has okay. been yeah one gotcha. issue. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. I look forward to reading it. Second. Motion to second. Further discussion? Do you know which which study I'm talking about? I do. Okay. I do, yeah. Yeah, I'm picturing the map and the full properties. I am too. Yeah, they, that, were, they were yellow. In that, <laughs> that location <laughs> that Everett's talking about is one of those. It is. Yeah. It is, yeah. Okay, uh, no further discussion. Both in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Nay, I just have it. Does that give you what you guys need to name? Yeah. You guys all here? Yeah. Is the engineering study real about the bridge on 15 and actually acting as a game? So I don't think that, I, to my knowledge, that wasn't evaluated because we would have need to, needed to do more cross section survey. But it feels like something that if you guys are observing it is worth looking at and running into the because that is what you're describing is exactly what was happening with the rare bridge in Jeffersonville. And yeah. putting that up changed the dynamic. Yeah. It was observed. By oh, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just I just wondered if the, any engineering had been done. If they'd only built the bridge the same height as the other one, you know, right. wouldn't have the same. Big dome over the city, over the town. So yeah. right now. No, no, let's relocate. We'll you have to have a bypass for the river, too. The Winusi yeah. approach. And, and, and so that, like that, that technical assistance funding we have can look at yeah. things yeah. like that yeah. bridge yeah. and that. Yeah. Everywhere one would talk to when Johnson brought that up, yeah. which is that kind of my experience with doing this in Boca and Jeffersonville is that kind of local knowledge helps hone in and refine what you can see. It's so discouraging because of bridges in the Yes. Um, and I actually, I, I don't think this is on the list or, and I don't think it came up, but um, the area where the Lamoil and Guyon meet. Yep. Um, I think that's an area that should be primed for lowering. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's oh, but I yeah. think that's I think that's in there on the flood benching. Yeah, that's yeah. one that we were kind of trying to be on the flood benching a little general because we're yeah. talking about yeah, private right. property. That's, that's a space where benching can be thrown out the window. You can remove just a lot just be there. Yeah, yeah. It's my back here. Okay. Give <laughs> me a nice swimming hole. Yeah. Well, if they want to shovel like some of the water. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get started. Yeah. 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 Okay. I do believe I do believe we yeah. have a motion. Do you guys need further motion? I am gonna move on unless it just not. I don't want to disrupt this motion, but just also, you know, in some cases there might be discussions with private property owners about some of these as long that um 
the select board is okay with those happening discrete man. Anybody object to that? I think that um, I, I think believe that's important. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Very good. Yeah. All the hard work. Thank you. Our next item. Um, I do believe in Tom's packet. There is a suggested motion. Uh, this is about uh, delegating liquor license approvals for uh, special events and renewals to clerk. What are the board's wishes? I like I like the idea. I don't know. Thank you. We talked about this at our last meeting, and I think Tom and Rosemary are going to check and see if this is perfectly copacetic to do legal proper. I know they have done it for catering and special events. Thing like what has to be to sign off. But I don't know about the liquor whether whether that you can like these are. Did you go down? No, no, we didn't really have to go. What's the reason for this? Because it takes up too much time, or you need stuff done before the actual meeting itself? Yeah, it's like now that we're trying to move the agenda up a week, so sometimes, there's, especially the catering or special event permit, we get it like a week in advance, or sometimes days in advance. So they're handwritten. So that way, Rosemary can just sign off on it and let you guys know. But she'll always let you know, but you know that it just kind of prevents special meetings, prevents additions to the agenda, prevents you know, catering for what? Say some like that wedding. Wedding. Say like say, say they have a like Rock Art Brewery come and they have a couple of kegs. Do they have a bartender who's licensed? Well, oh, yeah, yeah. You still have to have a town liquor license for that. I will make a motion to delegate to Rosemary or delegate to the trans. Clerk, yeah, the authority to approve liquor license renewals and special events permits, if allowed by law. Wonderful. There's a second. There second. Second. Okay. Further discussion. I have one, which my guess is it's already going to be done. Any renewal? Would you send out that standard letter with it? Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Um, all those opposed? And the ayes have it. Congratulations, Rosemary. Brand new title. Power broker. This year, now the liquor licenses, you know, used to always be April 3rd. Now it's one year from the day of the last renewal. So it's staggered throughout the year. Um, and yeah. Not all at once. So Rosemary is our very own commissioner of liquor control. Um, our next item is the interlocal kennel agreement. Uh, Tom, would you like to kick this one off? So this is um, this is we had it as an addition, but it turns out we didn't need it as an addition because the dog was the church and I think it's never town of Johnson. But um and then I think in looking at this, I would ask the board to delegate one or two people to go through this with a fine tooth comb, negotiate with Hyde Park, and come back to the board with a finished product. I would like to say that there are two things that I, I'm uncomfortable with. And then I know Duncan has expressed those same similar concerns. I think. I think the biggest part that I'm my biggest concern is I think I would like to sit down with all six town at the table and all of us sign together like we did the interlocal assessor. Right now, this is just between the town of Hyde Park and Johnson. And then, you know, just there's, there's only five towns, right? One town's already been One town's already been Yep. So does that automatically mean our fee is going to go from five thousand to six thousand? Not as written uh, or presented, but potential. I, I don't. Know. I I totally agree. Tom, Tom's spot on. Um, if this is truly 
an interlocal agreement. It needs to be all all the parties need to be party to it. There's we have a really good model with the assessor. It's been reviewed by the town attorney. Um, you know, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. I see this as a lesser lessee agreement, more like subletting. Almost, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. And that makes me really uncomfortable because it changes the interpretation of problems as it arises. Absolutely. Versus being a municipal level problem and solving the problem for the municipality, we're now dealing with the landlord. Yeah, and, and there, you know, the way this is framed, just as a general thing, it, this is really framed where the Hyde Park Animal Control Officer is making calling all the flops. That's full say. That's a big question. And and I don't think we should subsuming our animal control authority to Hyde Park. But, you know. Two days right off, right off the bat really made me really uncomfortable. On page two, it says receiving sheltering and holding stray and over surrendered animals. There is no such thing under our ordinance. Nope. We will only receive dogs running at large. Yeah. And by and picked up by the animal control officer, not by some Joe on the street. You know, it's going to be our animal control officer. And the next, the section three. Hyde Park may have its sole discretion releasing the animal to its owner upon accepting less than the full amount of fees uh, owed to Johnson or Hyde Park based on financial hardship and their animal control officers making that decision. I'm... So anyway, I think there's lots lots of stuff that needs to be looked at, and I think Tom's going to do it. I think as it's written. The only way that you would move forward like this is that you would pay a stipend to Hyde Park to be for animal control services. And that way let them deal with the residents in your outfit. That's the only, I would that's how I see this would be the only alternative to this that would be acceptable. Or if you're gonna relinquish all decision making, then you're paying for that. And then you're not part of the patient service. That's right. Then it's like, all right, we're contracting with Hyde Park to do our animal control services plus handling. That's it. Oh, we're done. All right. Yeah, we'll pay you that. It's fine. Dean and BJ, great job. But you're, you're off the hook. Yeah, maybe that's something we could and should look at. You know, I, I, I can't but this is too agree to that. Well, but this is too hot. This isn't too, puts us in bad position. I, I understand yeah. that. They're not going to be Yeah. Well, the price is really big. Yeah. <laughs> But one of the board's wishes, uh, I believe Tom's specific request was for John to work with. No, Shane was working with with the. I was getting reports uh, from Dean previously, which there was not really any reports. I saw this draft the same day that everyone else did. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to you know try to. This was Hyde Park generated. It wasn't interlocally generated. Right. Like yes. Like right. the assessor was like interlocally. It was, it was meetings. It was. Yeah. 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 It was a. I I will say that Ron Rudinsky and I probably did the lion's share of the work of pulling the pieces together, but they were they were definitely working. Well, initially it was just Hyde Park and Johnson. Yeah. Um, right. And then we added. You know, we slowly added added people. Yeah. yeah. But I think one thing that's not in here, unless I'm afraid of mistaken, is. Um, a sub assignment of the representative to work as part of the local and yeah. the local agreement committee. And you know, our our lo you know, local agreement for the assessor says we shall meet at a year or stuff like that. I think that something like that should be in there too. The town's right, it's a lot of research. Yeah, it's a lot of it's uh yeah. It's really if you're going to be your local agreement, the town should have been able to at least agree to sign. Right. Yeah. I Park went out on land and paid thirty thousand dollars to lease space with this that cattle, and now they want to come back and see if they can squeeze. I mean, get five thousand dollars to be to that. All right. Yeah. Um, so, no. Back to the original question: What are the wishes of the board? Do you want a couple of people to work on this? Would you like Tom and just express our interest and our concerns? Nice, all right. 
think Tom's looking for direction in the market. So. I would um, like, I'm happy to negotiate, but I would like another board member just to like send it out to, hey, this is what we talked about. What are your thoughts? That's whether it's one or two. I'm happy, I'm, to, I'm happy to continue being that person. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I think put it out to them that this is not really an interlocal agreement and we would love to come up with something that is a little bit closer to the previous interlocal agreement um, with they, representation from each board. I'd like I'm to pick up, that. you know, probably before the meeting, you say, all right, what do you want me to advocate for? What do you, want me to, you know, that's just, yeah. so it's not solely for me, but, you know, just hearing from the friends the board to the table. Right. Sounds good. Is that what the boards look like? Yeah. Yep. And in the meantime, we could probably all share any concerns or conditions. Can I ask Adrian and Jean to just figure out what it would cost to build the cattle at the Christmas Yeah, that's a good question. I think it's money. Yeah. Oh. You just need a cement pad, you know. No, I think it's right. we got to see two conversations going on. One of them's about taxes. So. Yeah. Okay. You and Shane can talk about it. I mean, any board member can email Shane. Tom, Tom raised an interesting question, too, and, and, which I think is appropriate because I don't know if this is, I don't know if this agreement's going to work. Um, so, as a backup plan, we ought to have that. His his question was, should he investigate what it might cost to build a chemist? So maybe maybe crystals. I, mean, I don't know if crystal is the right person, but or at old metal or or somewhere. You know, I mean, there's there are some plug and play options that I Park was looking at. Um, you know, I, literally chemical options. If I remember correctly, the numbers that were thrown out for that were somewhere in the seventy thousand range. Oh. Um, and they did not, it still would require us to find somebody to staff the thing. So yeah. I personally would not want that to be town employees. Um, and sort of the reason that we're in this issue in the first place is because they're not private people who are clamoring to do this work. So yeah, that was, that was sort of the downside of that proposal previously. Else, outside the box idea might not be popular. Could we go to the chemical that Hyde Park is contracted with? Both the idea of contracting with them and for our first year, reimburse Hyde Park for our portion and not have an agreement with Hyde Park. It's recognizing that Hyde Park went out on a limb and just starting the relationship directly with the kind of I, I like that idea of having a direct contract with the panel versus a weird sub middle. Yeah. You know, all six sounds could have contract. Uh, that could be a backup. Plan. And that, that was what it was before. Yeah, that's exactly you know, what it was before. It's unfortunate that, or. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How much was it before? I guess it's cheaper. No. We didn't pay. We didn't we pay any the old fees. We just paid paid the right fees. But the kennel has changed ownership and the new owners, but if we are there, yeah, they're not willing to work under that. And honestly, I don't mean, right. Well, this isn't a bad deal, really, if we can work out some of the problems we have. Well, our total budget was, I think, 2000 or 2500 So that's all, that's paying hourly for ACOs. That's paying any unpaid dog fees and labor to the people who house dogs. And now we're now we're going to have that same. This is it. This is adding an additional five thousand on top of that twenty five. That's going to make. I know, but it's a much better deal than what the change started. Oh, that building system. I see. But in the other piece that we have exposure on is if somebody else gets. So right, right now, in theory, at least, don't break. <laughs> correct me on this, but in theory, in order for somebody to reclaim a dog, they had to pay. The, the penalty, fees and penalties do it. Right. Yeah. The can fees. Most of the time, people did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in, 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 in the way this is structured right now, the Hyde Park Animal Control Officer can say, oh, no, 
that person yeah. doesn't want all those fees. fees. We're going to waive half of the fees. But you're yeah. all of the fees, not the towns at all. Right. Yeah, okay. it's an awful easy decision for somebody to say, oh, geez, you know, that guy can't afford it. And to have them that they already just drop your dog off. Well, yeah, that's in there too. So, an interim backup solution, I believe the board is in support of and working on the screen that they are. And through a weird idea, but I would be getting rid of this. Yeah. I'm going to reach out to them. I can see where that's I just my idea that it. the board wants it. Sure. So, there's no means. It's just no means. It will never be paid. So yeah. they can get rid of the dog out of the kennel. They're not paying the expenses. In some days, the dog is euthanized. So they're forcing them to be dogs. Here's seven days. Thank you. The last week's like 1500. Yeah. I mean, they can't find the owner of the dog they use that. I think that's the way it used to be. We have to hold it by statute. You have to hold it for 10 days. Ah. Or is it seven? It's seven. By statute. Our ordinance says that. Regardless, is there anything further the board has for wishes on this? I think we have some homework. Uh, Let's have an update on this one. This so would we'll make a great camera on the first floor. <laughs> it would. Rosemary and Mike Jeff Volker's home in Tom's office would make a great camera. I want the seniors back up here. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, Tom, would you like to give a brief update on the municipal building? I believe Rosemary gave one earlier. Is there anything in addition to that? So I think we'll be, for the public to hear, it's going to be very chaotic and there might be missed calls as the phones are ringing upstairs while we're setting it downstairs. Yeah, I called twice today. It is sheer chaos, trying, especially. During lunch, and I think trying to run the office while moving is kind of dysfunctional. I think we need to tell people to stop calling, you know, to publicly say we're done, we're closed, and, and then just powerhouse downstairs because trying to do it, stay open and do it today was just, I think Rosemary, Eric, and I were downstairs for two hours just trying to like figure the space out. And there was, we could hear the phone ringing down, you know, because the phone rings downstairs. It was so, um, but we, the guy's coming tomorrow. We have to reorganize furniture before that. So it might not be July. It might be July. Yeah. I think July 11th is a great day. I think July 11th is a great day. Ooh, what's the <laughs> Think about it for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you and Rosemary uh, agree on that concept. I don't know how much to say about here other than put it out there on front porch forum or down page to page, try to communicate through that that we're moving in a difficult institution. Yeah, the hard part is like big for your patients. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Is everybody doing long. something, you can't have a designated person to answer. You know, I think I think what we need to do. I haven't talked. I'm saying this out the top. Sorry. It's almost like we have to have the bill. It's really the village utility has to have a way to communicate. Say something happens with water, electric, or sewer. That, and it's almost like we need to publicize that cell phone, Eric's cell phone, or Nate's cell phone. Just say today only. This is the number to call, and then we then we do something like that. So the right. utility then you change the cell phone. There, there, <laughs> there, it's, there it's, 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 it's the village that causes the most problem. Up around the I, site, no, I can't actually can't do that. But so in essence, that that's, is that's the critical. They're, they're the ones that the essential service. Squeaky wheels. Yeah, that's that's not. So, so then do with that. Then you got your cell phone. <laughs> Well, once we get to a desk situation, 
Yeah. Are there cell phones paid for by the bill? Are they? They get a re they get money for their personal cell phone. Well, that's fine. If, if they get money from the village, then their phone numbers should go out. Well, I don't think we can make that. Yeah, well, they, we're, they, we're Bella, with, Bella Village that. It's uh, work with the village. Yeah, or, 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 I think you're right. Yeah. Further updates? Really nice to have them. All right, so it's well. Good work getting it all yeah, I mean, almost back together. Uh, I believe our next item, uh, because we won't be in all up, is a fireworks permit. As the board all decision permit. Yes. Has it been signed off on by the fire department and the Rosemary syndicated it out? Police so I'm not I'm not seeing the there's supposed to be a signature line for oh they're quite so we'd be the first ones. Fire chief is the first one. They are the, yeah, I mean in the past I think the fire department, the sheriff department, and other sort of I guess I don't know. This is for a celebrated 80th birthday party. The date is on 7 6 24. 8 p.m. ending time 8 30 p.m. with a rain date of 7 7 with the same colors. Safety our nephew is a firefighter. Four boxes, 36 pieces. Justin Gillen David Buffet. So the fire chief is supposed to be the first thing. Well, if any one of them doesn't, doesn't agree, it doesn't get approved. Right. I think it requires the approval of all three. Right, but I would thought that they yeah, they go so everything else. You know, they may they may not be entirely aware that they need to do that. The other thing that I, I think sort of ties our hands on this is that the applications need to be made at least 15 days in advance of the date of the display. Then keep it on the Dropbox. This was in the Dropbox? Yep. Well, I mean, it says on the form 627.24. So that's within 15 days. Like, I, I would love to approve it, which I think state law kind of ties our hands here. So one of the things that they are supposed to do is notify any and all the neighbors. Of the date. He's provided a notice of the time, date, and location. I don't find it mainly for people with animals. And that's part of why they're supposed to go to get a dolphin. What if they'd be willing to rent them? Well, give me the fireman's right. permit. We can. So I don't know what's here it is. Um, you guys want to look at the actual Oh, it's a you already it's a deal is it was it no don't sign it. Submitted in five. I signed for the whole point. We did. Okay, so what are the board's wishes? 
There's no need in moving to deny because no motion would be a denial. But your your point is that it's not going to be there. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm reading the statute right now, and uh, let's see, real specific with state statute. Yeah, are you reading our ordinance? No, state statute. statute. Title twenty, chapter one seventy seven. Let's see, uh, going all the way down to. So chapter three, fireworks, 3132 prohibitions, permits, and then all the way down to C and D. Um, C says any display of torch permit is issued shall be handled by a competent operator to be approved by the chiefs of police and fire departments of the municipality in which the display is to be held and shall be of a character, blah, 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 blah. Gotta be safe, all that messed up. Uh, and then D, application permit shall be made to the chief of the fire department or in municipalities with no fire department, the select board in writing at least 15 days in advance of the day of the display. So I, I don't know where the people that would approve it in a town that has a fire department. Uh, we don't. I'm glad they came to us and asked our, our mission. Right. I think. Right, it's the village. And they're in the town. What do we do? Yeah, I think right. It, it would be the fire chief who would have to approve this, and it would have to be at least 15 days in advance of the display. And it hasn't sat in our drop box for 10 days. It has 627 written on the on the sheet. So. Yeah. The check saying 627. The check is 628. Oh, yeah. I'd love to approve a fireworks display. I just don't want to do one if it's going to get us in trouble with the uh, state or the ATF. How the move to birthday party? <laughs> okay. Any further wishes from the board on that? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to enter executive session. I believe that we enter executive session for. Employee net evaluation and then one VSA 313A. Motion a second for the discussion. Anybody in Rosemary and Tom? Yes. <laughs> okay. Unless we're uh, not possible not. action coming out of executive session, I can let you know if you want. Uh, uh, board is entering executive session at Oh, wait, no. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, aye. aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Court is entering executive session at 8.57.